Hey, Christchurch family, I'm glad to be here with you today. Um, and, and once again, um, the devotion that I'm sharing is going to be from this really great devotional book called uh, New Morning Mercies by Paul David Tripp. And um, actually with the youth group lesson that I was teaching, we've been looking at habits and how habits um, play a large role into the path that we walk. And we've been looking at this idea that, you know, we all have a destination of being closer to Jesus. We all have this destination of the type of person that we want to be and where we want to go in life. And it's really the direction we walk that determines the destination that we arrive at. Our good intentions won't get us to that destination. Um, but really, the path that we walk will get us there. And so often, the habits and the things that we do in our everyday life are going to um, really be directly related to the path that we walk. And so as we began to look at this idea of developing healthy habits in our youth group, um, I started doing some reading on prayer and on scripture reading and on solitude and silence as spiritual disciplines or habits that will be healthy for us to walk towards this destination of Jesus. Um, and, and during this time of kind of study and looking at this, I was reminded of a uh, devotion that I read um, from March 3rd, um, a little while ago on prayer. And, and I want to share it with you today um, because it really stood out to me. And, and it was really good because I think during this time of the coronavirus, there's a sense of we're, we're maybe a little bit more reliant upon God because things aren't going our way and we don't know what else to do. But at the same time, we have been isolated. And it almost feels like we're also becoming more reliant upon ourselves. And at least that's what I've seen in myself is like, you know, I'm, I'm here taking care of things. We're cooking. We're doing all this stuff and we're making things work. You know, we're teaching our kids. We're doing all those kinds of things. And it's real easy to start giving yourself some pats on the back and start saying, you know what, like I'm pretty good at this. And, and you begin to like trust more in yourself than in God. And so this one stood out to me. So it's March 3rd. And at the top of this, he says, prayer is abandoning my reliance on me and running toward the rest that can be found only when I rely upon the power of God. So I'm going to read it to you now. Prayer abandons independence. Prayer forsakes any thought that you can make it on your own. Prayer affirms dependency. Prayer acknowledges weakness. Prayer renounces assessments of capability. Whew. Prayer embraces the reality of failure. Prayer tells you that you are not at the center. Prayer calls you to abandon your plans for the wiser plans of another. Prayer, prayer flows from a deep personal sense of need and runs towards God's abundant grace. Because of what prayer really is, prayer is not natural for us. It is not natural for us to embrace our sin, weakness, and failure. It's not natural for us to be comfortable depending on mercy of another. It's not natural for us to surrender our hopes and dreams to the better vision of another. It's not natural for us to surrender our wisdom and control to someone greater than us. It's not natural for us to think that we need grace. On the other hand, it's natural for us to think that our righteousness, wisdom, and strength and work are enough. As a result, many of our prayers are those religious pronouncements of self-righteous people, the long wish list of entitled people, or the impatient demands of people who are wondering what in the world God is doing. So many of our prayers aren't prayers at all. And boy, that is convicting. When he says that many of our prayers are religious pronouncements of self-righteous people or long wish lists of entitled people, man, that, that hits home with me because so often my prayers aren't, you know, uh, going to God in total dependence because it's not natural like he talks about. Um, my natural inclination is to, to ask God to do something for me that I want or just, you know, it, it, it's something that has to do with self. And he goes on to say, here's the bottom line. We need to be met by God's grace if in true humility 
we are ever going to be able to abandon our self-reliance and pray for grace. It is only by grace that we will ever acknowledge our need for grace and worship God for the grace He has been willing He has so willingly lavished on us. Since prayer is fundamentally counterintuitive, we need grace to rescue us from our self-oriented religious meanderings so that, with humble hearts, we may acknowledge God as the Redeemer King and cast ourselves on His gracious care. Prayer always forsakes the kingdom of self for the kingdom of God, and for that, and for that we all need forgiving, rescuing, and transforming grace. That strikes home. Let me read that one more time because this is the part that I think is really the punch. Prayer always forsakes the kingdom of self for the kingdom of God. So prayer takes us away from self, which is our sinful, fleshly, kind of natural inclination, and always reorients us towards the kingdom of God. And so for that, we all need forgiving, rescuing, and transforming grace. This is the kind of grace for which true prayer leads us to cry out. And then he says, for further study and encouragement, read Luke 11, 1 through 13. And so I hope that encourages you today. And I hope maybe it also convicts you and reminds you that, that in all things... No matter how good we are, no matter how great we are at some things and all things, we always have to be dependent upon God's grace. Because anything good that we can do is because of God's grace in our lives. And so I hope that resonates with you and I hope that encourages you and I hope that uh, will even convict you. Um, and I hope you're doing well, Christ Church. I miss seeing you and I can't wait till we're all together again soon. Um, God bless.